Okay, uh, good morning everyone. How are you doing? Doing good. Okay, good to know that. I uh, hope you were able to submit your assignment. The heads are shaking, so that's good to know. Fine, so we'll pray and we'll uh, continue with our uh, topics here. Um, Yeah. Which one? Oh, somebody's unmuted. Yeah, okay. I get that. Yes. Now it's okay. You can try. Must be. Our Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for this day and this love in your life. Thank you for this presence. And I serve you for your hands. With each everyone and especially for Son of Hands, Hans Mem, please guide them, teach them Holy Spirit, my God. You talk with us through a man's uh, mouth and give us knowledge. Uh, I send for hands with us, give your patience, give your consideration, give your understanding, power, Holy Spirit, name of the Lord, and give your memory powers. How can we store your words and how can we apply it in our daily lives? And each of you, time you handle with us, Holy Spirit, name of, I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, um, Savita. So today, before we enter into the class, into what we have for discussion, I just wanted to ask us, we are talking about faith and uh, growing in faith. So is there any particular um, incident in your own life as you've joined Bible College, about two, two and a half months now, almost three months, almost three months. So have you seen any growth in your faith regarding something, something particular, uh, any such experience, testimony? So we can start with that, uh, both for online as well as uh, on-campus students. So you can just share about how you know, your journey of faith has been, do you feel like there is any difference? If so, what is that difference? Sister, I have something to say. Yes, yes, Sister Getrud, please go ahead. Yes, uh, since I have started uh, learning about faith and uh, praise and worship and Holy Spirit, uh, all the subjects in the... Uh, uh, I want to say that, you know, my uh, family is not uh, saved, most of them. Mm. And I used to pray every day, like, you know, every day without fail, I pray. But um, yesterday when I was praying, you know, the Holy Spirit gave me a, a like a strong uh, uh, utterance to pray to remove the demonic presence from the family you know and this is i felt first time that when i prayed yesterday something will happen in my family and i believe that my children and my husband will all come to the lord mm. um yes sister that's all thank you god thank you thank you sister gertrude good to know that you're seeing some changes uh, in your yeah. family and you've been praying for them for so long so uh, we agree with you for them to come to the lord and their lives to be touched. Yeah, thank you, sister. Sure. Thank you, Sister Gertrude. Yeah, anyone else? Anything in your own faith journey? I'm sure there are some changes. So even if it is simple, you can just share. Anyone? Dr. Nancy, I'm Dr. Anusha. Yes, 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 Anusha. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, it's like I can see the changes in my life, um, mm. like very evidently, how my faith changed, how God is leading me. And because I'm the only one who saved in my family. Mm. Uh, in 2018, I got saved. I was praying actually for the family got saved. My mom got saved recently. 
and for the family i'm praying still for my dad and my sister's family but the faith it before like i'm accepting the things even though they are religious uh, are, are like hindus but mm -hmm. i'm now openly saying uh, about god about the things how god look the things how is god and it's all changed in in this two months only mm. Praise God. Thank you, uh, Anusha. So again, uh, I think more of a journey of becoming stronger in your faith and uh, boldness, right? To share. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Um, anything else? Any other area of your lives where you feel your faith has developed? Okay. Um, we have a, a comment here uh, by Akhil. He says, uh, though faith is something we hear often in sermons, Sunday after Sunday, there is an enhanced depth view of faith and how best we can exercise the same in day-to-day -day life, be it minuscule activities or something larger than life. These classes, Monday to Friday, have been a blessing and everyday prayer life is more effective and the challenges that I go through, despite what it is now, there is immense peace. All uh, will work well in time to come. Okay. Uh, time to me. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Akhil, for uh, uh, sharing your uh, views. Uh, it's really good to know because uh, that's what we've been talking about. The more you hear the word of God, faith is built up, right? So uh, definitely our faith is going from strength to strength, glory to glory, but we need to work on it. Uh, and there are many ways in which we can actually work on our faith to increase it. So faith does not have to be what it was when we became a believer. Usually when we become a believer, there is... Uh, a sort of a measure of faith. We talked about it. God gives everyone a measure of faith. So uh, what measure that is, we don't know. But one level or one measure of faith is given to all of us. But we can go from that measure to an increased measure. You remember, we said our faith grows exceedingly, right? So it can be made to increase. So at every given point in life, we should be greater in our faith than what we were last year. You got it? Or maybe last month. What my faith was, I need to be in another place where my faith is greater. Okay. So how to, how to actually make this faith grow or how to develop this faith? So it's there in our uh, chapter 16 here, how to exercise faith. But I want to have it more like a conversation or a discussion. So how to exercise the faith, how to increase the faith. Some key, key thoughts. How do you do it? Sorry? Prayer. Okay. Through prayer, of course. Through prayer, it increases. Uh, through Word of God, yeah. Word of God, it increases. So we've seen all these points earlier, right? So uh, through prayer, we know that um, uh, Jesus said, whatever you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them. So there is a association, prayer and faith. You believe and you ask. And those things are done for us. Uh, even when the disciples could not cast the demon out. Do you remember? There was one time that uh, the disciples tried to cast out a demon. And they couldn't. Okay. Then later on they go and uh, they ask Jesus. Jesus, why couldn't we cast the demon out? Then Jesus said, this kind shall not come out except through prayer and fasting. Okay. So prayer and fasting. What is the use of prayer and fasting? See, prayer and fasting affects our faith. Got it? So when we pray, when we fast, it is going to uh, develop my faith. That's why Jesus said prayer and fasting. Okay, Because it will directly affect our faith. Our faith will increase. And then when faith is more, can we move in the supernatural? Of course, we can move in the supernatural because faith is so much stronger. That is why prayer and fasting. You got it? Uh, one, of, one of the reasons. Now, uh, one of you said through 
the word of God, through the study of the word of God. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So to fill our hearts with the word of God, Romans 10, 17, we already said that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Now, what is the work that the word does in us? We have to look at it like food. Okay. So when we eat food, we become stronger. Same thing as far as faith is concerned. So the more time we are spending in the word, our faith will become stronger. Got it? So uh, I think I mentioned this earlier to uh, exercise the gifts of the Holy Spirit or to minister healing. Somewhere we may have some struggles. It may not flow. And sometimes even healing, we are praying for people, we are praying for their healing, and uh, we don't see it manifest, right? So how to build faith in that particular situation? Spend time in the Word. The more time that we spend in the Word, what happens? The gifts of the Spirit, you can operate quite strongly in the gifts of the Spirit, whether it is the prophetic or, um, you know, um, even... Uh, tongues or anything, any gift of the spirit or ministering healing. Let's say uh, we are going on a mission trip or we are ministering in a Sunday service or we are going to uh, an outreach. Okay. And we want to see answers to prayer. What to do? Spend time in prayer, but also spend time in the word of God. Additional time. Just meditate. Meditate on all those scriptures of how to minister to people. Then you go. Then when we do that, what will we see? More faith. And where there is faith, we can move mountains. There will be answers to prayer. There will be miracles. There will be the demonstration of the power of God. So through the word of God. Okay. And uh, how long should we listen to the word of God? How long? Okay. Let's say somebody is a believer. They're spending time in the word of God. Right. Um, one year, two years, they spend time, now they're able to uh, serve God. Many, many things are happening through their lives. So is that enough? Can they stop there and then continue the work of the ministry? Should they continually be in the word of God? Yes. yes. So it's, yeah, that's true. So it's a discipline. It's a discipline. And in fact, the, um, you know, the longer your journey with God, you feel the need more and more to be in the word. Otherwise, it's so difficult to minister. Okay? So we, we become dependent on the word of God. So we need to come to that extent where we are depending on the word of God. Uh, you know, the psalmist, he said that, uh, open up to me your word. It's like a treasure. You know, when you, um, let's say, you uh, dive into an ocean, Okay. You have the blue seas, right? You dive into the ocean. Uh, we know that there are so many things that exist in the ocean that we've not seen. There are plants, there are, uh, you know, there is uh, uh, all kinds of, if you may call it whatever, landscape. There are animals, meaning fish and all kinds of sea creatures. So once you go in, you start to discover, right? You start to see new things. And you start to understand those new things. When we don't dive into the sea, we don't even know that it exists. The word of God is like that. Okay? Uh, we may not open our Bible and think, yeah, something is there in the word. Okay, fine. But when you dive into it, that's why the psalmist said, your word, it's like treasure. There are treasures in your word. Treasures are hidden in your word. Okay, so when we start to engage in the word, then what happens? We start to see many things which we did not see before. And, you know, we are excited about what God is showing us. And so the journey with the word of God to build faith, it's a continuous journey. It never ends. In fact, we become more dependent on the word of God. Got it? So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we need to depend a lot on it. So we can read the Bible, we can read some good books, which explain the word in a proper theological way, right? So be careful of what books we read. 
it, it should have some, um, you know, accurate content or content. Then um, we can listen to some good sermons. Why am I saying good sermons? Because it has to have the word of God and the right interpretation of the word of God, good sermons. And from time to time, as you're listening, your faith is being built up. Okay. Uh, so like, even for me, uh, like, apart from reading the Bible, apart from maybe reading some, you know, good books, articles and all that, uh, when you have the time, when I have the time, what I do is I, I have a set of uh, sermons that, you know, I, con I consider them good sermons, because it has good interpretation of the scripture. So I just play it. And I'm, it's constantly going into my mind. It's constantly going into my head. Maybe, you know, when you're in your house, you're just doing your housework or you're uh, driving somewhere, you're walking, you're listening. Why? Because your mind is always active. You have to, you, we can utilize the faculty of our mind. So because my mind is alert, you just put it on. What's happening? You're concentrating on it. Even though your hand is doing something else, it's going inside. It's going inside. And... What, what exactly happens? Faith is building up. Got it? So faith is something that we have to work on. Work on your faith. Work on, you know, I need to work off on my faith. And keep the faith stronger and stronger. Okay? Make every effort, every effort, in every way possible to go to the word of God. See, this one scripture, there might be only one scripture. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But there are a thousand sermons. As people understand the depths of what that one word means. So get into the word. Get deep into the word. Let it get deep inside us. And it becomes the food. And it becomes the food. We can grow through it. Got it? So in this way, depend completely on the word of God. Then faith will increase. Okay, fine. So all this we already know. What else should we do to keep our faith strong or to build our faith? Correct. Correct. So that is more in the area of exercising, exercising our faith. Okay. So faith, if you look at it, remember it as two things. One is food. So when we eat food, we become stronger. Faith, uh, through the word of God, we can increase it. Got it? Second is, faith is a muscle. We are saying that, right? So how to increase our muscles? We need to exercise. Without exercise, what will happen? The, the muscle will um, sort of die down or atrophy, we call it. So faith will not work if we don't use it. That is another thing. One is the word feed the word second is use your faith so how do we use our faith as um, you know nelson pointed out speak your faith then uh, pray pray your faith through do what is required right some action if god is saying do this do that we need to just step in and we have to try and do it okay um, then of course we must thank God. We already saw that. We also should be patient, be enduring, right? Trust God. God has something good for me. If I'm going to do what he's telling me to do, something good is on, on the way. We need faith. We need to trust God and go ahead and do it, right? In the beginning, it may look very scary, but when we trust the Lord, we are able to uh, see the results. So go ahead and do it. Be patient. Now, um, one other thing that we want to share is, remember earlier we said we need um, a strong desire. Okay, A strong desire or in other words, determination. In the last class, we saw how that woman with the issue of blood, how the blind men and um, also I think... Um, uh, the woman who is uh, from a Canaanite woman, right? So they all came to Jesus and they didn't leave Jesus. They said, Jesus, you have to do for us. So determination, apart from uh, growing our faith and acting our faith, the next important thing is determination. We need some determination. 
where we we know that okay i god you said this i want to see this happen i won't i won't give up till this result comes got it so if let's say our faith is like um, uh okay like you know if god does i'll be happy if god doesn't do it's fine i'll adjust you know that is not the right kind of faith when we say faith that attitude is actually showing unbelief right so real faith is determined it says if god is saying this this is in the will of god this is what god wants for me i will go after it no matter what right so determination determination to get it no matter what that is very very essential in um sort of uh, fulfilling the faith or the results of faith okay so um these are the points which are there in um, chapter 16 Uh, which again is sort of a repetition of whatever we have learned so far but i just quickly summarized it for us okay are there any any points of discussion regarding growing our faith or um, determination or practicing our faith okay um so sanjay is uh, sharing he says i had many unanswered questions with respect to my faith before i joined bible college but on many occasions before i could even post or ask questions they were answered during the sessions it felt like god was ready with all the answers to my questions all i had to do was make myself available to receive from him okay so thank you for sharing that uh, brother sanjay um so you know god has been speaking to him through the bible college the different questions that uh, he has so it's good to know that sometimes we just have to um as i said earlier step out just step out and then you will see how god will provide for us but till we step out we won't know okay so just talking about um, the exercising of faith and stepping out maybe i'll just share one testimony uh, which i have um is that scripture okay so um what happened is like after i finished my uh, graduation i really wanted to do my masters program in a slightly different subject and uh, god gave that opportunity i completed everything uh, but it was very difficult to get a job because um, the the field in which i did my masters there were not many opportunities so it was very very frustrating very um, stressful because even after completing uh, you know your studies doing well you're not getting a proper job so uh, finally again it was a real miracle so i used to uh, i i just took up a particular uh, you know clinical job i'm from a clinical background so i just took up a clinical job and i was working in it but every day i would sit in the clinic and i would pray in tongues like when there are no patients i would pray in tongues i i had all most of pastors books 
I would read the books, underline the books, um, confess the scriptures, walk up and down, walk up and down, and you know, pray in the pray in the spirit and say, God, you have to open a door for me because I I have all this knowledge. I can't even use it because I'm not getting the job which I want, right? So uh, this happened for a while, but it was really like a faith thing because earlier when I took up that uh, uh, program, I had a clear word from God. to go ahead and do that course so i did the course but after that i'm not getting a job so you can imagine it's like abraham right you're waiting waiting you're not getting it's like really frustrating so only one thing i decided i'm not going to grumble every day i'll pray in the spirit i pray hard in the spirit read the scriptures confess the scriptures that's what i used to do day and night i just do that then one day uh, i got a phone call very uh, surprising miraculous story uh, i just met somebody in some entrance exam and that family um, that brother he was in um, uh, you know like the the work that i had done the study that i had done his organization had that in in its name okay so uh, i suddenly remembered that brother oh he works for an organization which may have opportunities for me so one day i just remembered it and i had their phone number so i called him up and i said uh, is there any opportunity any jobs uh, he said okay you come come to the office we'll see and i went to the office and i was so desperate for a job right you're just ready to do anything you're so desperate i was in that position so he looked up all the opportunities and he said um, you know what i think there is one particular um, one particular role uh and he stated that role okay it has to do with you know public health it has to do with community health and development would you like to try he said the name of the role i don't even know what it means right but i was so desperate i said yes yes i'll do i'll do give me that job so i just uh, signed up i went home after that and i googled what does it mean you know what is the role going to be because i don't know what to do in that job i just know that okay i have the knowledge something i'll be able to do at least i'll try right so i just took the job then the job started and it was so difficult so difficult because i have some knowledge but certain skills i was lacking uh, so it was uh, so challenging to go to work because initially i went then as the days went by they had given us like a table uh, desk and uh, you know one room i'll go sit inside the room put my head down and just sometimes even cry and pray and say god i don't know what to do they're asking me to do this they're asking me to do that i don't know how to do this okay now what should i do you have to teach me i'm lacking some skills right so one particular day they gave me one assignment i just couldn't take it anymore i just went inside the room closed the door put my head down on the table and i was like what am i doing my training is in you know clinical work i am sitting in front of the computer i have to do all this this is just not good why why is all this happening you know you go through all that so i was just there and i said holy spirit you have to speak to me now i want you to speak to me right now okay because i'm not i, I was almost beginning to lose my faith so at that time it is so amazing one verse it just came in my spirit and i don't even know the reference of the verse okay the verse was whatever is born of god overcomes the world and this is the victory that has overcome the world our faith okay whatever is born of god overcomes the world and this is the victory that has overcome the world our faith so you can imagine i'm just praying and in my spirit i get the scripture whatever is born of god overcomes the world so at that point i decided i'm not going to say i can't i can't anymore i am born of god i overcome the world that's it right through my faith i will overcome everything so i just started telling myself i can do this right i am born of god i overcome the world this is my victory even my faith this is 1 john chapter 5 verse 4 okay so uh, i can't forget that scene sitting in the room and the verse coming to me and i start declaring the scripture and uh, 
so i just started working i just started uh, uh, you know you have to work on excel and so many things i'm not very good at it i don't even know it very well but these days you know on the internet you have everything you can try to learn so i did that so i just went looked up different tutorials this and that somehow work it out work it out okay you don't know how to work on a word document no problem learn work 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 but the beautiful thing is by the time like soon after this um, contract i got another job okay but it's just god's amazing grace that he helped me through my time in that organization and uh, literally those people didn't want to let me go because they felt like hey you're working so well but honestly i don't even know what the title of my role means when i took up the job okay i'm not encouraging you to do that but i did it okay maybe it's a mistake i don't know but i was just so desperate and um, i knew that you know god wanted me to uh, try something and also the exercise of faith i felt like if i just sat at home right and uh, thought why is god not doing anything god is not doing anything what about exercising my faith somewhere i just trusted god something i went to do you got it even that i feel is like you just have to step out it's very scary it's like you know when you have a swimming pool and you have the deep end and you don't know how to swim and you're jumping into the deep end the feeling is like that right so you're like okay i have to jump i am going to jump what next nobody knows right but somewhere that's what it is a leap of faith at least as far as faith is concerned as far as you know our walk with the lord is concerned we don't have to be afraid if god is saying it you can actually take the leap something good will come out of it right so uh, yeah experiences like this when i look back right at my own life i feel like trusting god each step like today i feel like what i'm doing is what i love like even if nobody paid me for i'm what i'm doing i would still do it because i love it but it's the way god leads us we've got to just walk with him little by little you know piece by piece season by season exercise your faith just step in okay if god is saying okay try this do this just do it then next he'll show you the next more courage step in do it keep moving and it's really god who leads all of us so uh, through you know whatever experience i have had i can surely assure you that god is so faithful right he knows what exactly we love to do and uh, you know what he wants us to do and he guides us into those places right so that we can serve him so uh, i just felt like uh, that might be encouraging for you so i shared it um, any any other i mean any questions any any thoughts about faith building yourself up in faith stepping out in faith you can ask okay so i'm sure uh, we all have our own stories you also may have your own experiences uh, but yeah thank god thank god that we all can uh, uh, you know see god's faithfulness now the question we want to answer is when we have uh, faith okay in some experiences there is failure see we had faith we trusted god we believed god but still it did not happen or we are calling it a failure why does why does a failure happen why failures what what went wrong sister maybe it was uh, not in god's will okay uh, maybe it was not god's plan right yeah to begin with yeah correct maybe it was not god's plan and we went we said okay god will still do it but if it's not god's plan then why should god do it 
isn't it okay fine it was not god's plan then suppose it is god's plan then why why is there failure failure as far as faith is concerned sister maybe it is not in his time okay sure it's it not could be a yeah sister it could be a test of our faith as well okay it could be a test of our faith as well okay so all your answers are very positive okay uh, like uh, yes there are delays so you're referring more to delays it's not god's time it's not um, you know it, it may be a test from god these are all delays and eventually the promises fulfilled now the question i am asking is let's imagine it is god's plan it is god's time and god wants us to have it but we didn't uh, it was not successful or effective our faith did not work why maybe we were not having the we were having some unbelief or doubt or anxiety sister could be could be so um, you know you're right actually uh, sister esther generally when we say that it is in god's plan but it didn't happen mostly the answer is somewhere we have missed something got it now as you said maybe unbelief is the issue maybe uh, doubt is the issue or maybe something else is the issue but it's definitely not god trying to take away that blessing from us you got it so if god promises something it means he wants to give it to us okay but if we don't get it even though it is god's will something is missing from our side it's not god's fault or it's not god's mistake got it so then we need to deal with it like god wanted this for me but i somehow missed it for example you know saul we keep saying saul in the old testament god wanted him to be a great king but he missed it then god had to pick david because saul is so disobedient right but what was the issue what was the problem god wanted him to be king there was no doubt about it but he couldn't why yeah disobedience pride rebellion these were the issues so the issue was more from the side of saul got it so that is an extreme example but even in our case let's say there is a promise of god but it does not happen then we should ask the question why did this not happen okay so what can be some of the reasons doubt unbelief okay anything else maybe a lack of determination you know how sometimes we don't we are not so passionate about what god wants we are, we say okay if it happens it's good otherwise it doesn't it, it's fine right so from our end we are not determined we are not we are not keeping our faith strong okay uh, we are not pursuing the promise that god has for us then we may miss out okay so uh, how do we deal with it the way we deal with it is we need to reflect each time we have to reflect and see why did it not happen okay uh, now we may get the exact answers we may not get the exact answers but something that we gain from our time of reflection we need to make sure that we change the next time 
so as we are in a way it is like learning lessons got it for example i'll just tell you um, you know people come they are sick okay as pastors we pray for them many times people get healed okay i'm saying many times because there are some times where it's been a long time but we are not seeing healing so as ministers of god it's very frustrating for us where we are asking the question why why is that person not receiving healing what is the problem okay it obviously the problem is not god's side what can be the problem is it my faith if it is my faith then i have to build my faith i have to maybe i will fast maybe i will spend more time in word in the word i will pray more you got it so look into the issue it cannot be god for sure because he is perfect but something may be missing from our side and we must understand that and try to work on it that's the way to improve ourselves then you work on yourself again you know you go minister to the person you see some improvement you see some healing okay praise god got it now what also happens is we learn lessons we learn lessons so in the future when i see somebody who's sick like that immediately it comes to my mind oh okay you know what i need to do is this maybe i need to teach that person about healing the scriptures from the word of god help them to believe help them confess so you guide people uh, on the basis of the lessons that we have learned over the years so it applies to all areas of our life learn lessons quickly because maybe there is something we are missing that is why it's not working got it it's supposed to work it's already in the word it's supposed to work but when it doesn't work then something from our side needs to be corrected you got it so learn the lesson don't forget the lesson uh keep moving forward with the lesson this is the way to deal with failures if we had a failure then we need to understand you know why what are the issues and sometimes we understand about ourselves for example maybe we um okay i'll come to you sister gertrude uh, maybe we we realize some attitudes in our own lives uh, may, maybe we have an attitude of laziness right god says okay i want you to have this wonderful ministry i want you to serve me like this but it's exciting for some time but then we don't pursue it then we recognize within ourselves you know what god wants it but i am the one who's lazy okay i should not be lazy from now onwards you know what i mean like spiritual laziness god i will pray i want to get rid of the spiritual laziness in the name of jesus so you learn about yourself oh i'm having problems with laziness i'm having problems with focus i'm having problems with something else got it so then we understand ourselves and we can be very alert as we journey through life that i should not make a mistake in the area of whatever it can be lust pride jealousy we know our own problems right so in this way we can kind of recognize and work on our own issues or problems okay so um, that that is something yes uh, sister please go ahead sister um, i want to ask a question yeah uh, sister i have the promise from god and i missed on it uh will god uh, give this promise again hmm okay uh it really depends on the the promise uh, sister gertrude uh or the area or um, what kind of a promise it was well it was a financial breakthrough financial breakthrough okay yeah. so if it is financial breakthrough i think uh, you don't have to worry because the word of god promises us a blessing through the cross so that is applicable throughout our lifetime financial blessing 
you got it okay. we yeah. may go through some rough seasons but in general god has said i am jehovah jaira right he is a provider yeah. even in the wilderness he provided for the israelites so yeah. uh, you don't have to worry as far as this promise is concerned thank you sister sure yeah thank you okay so akhil says our god is a god of second chances when god promises he will deliver so uh, akhil i agree with you and i also disagree with you little bit okay disagree in the sense not theologically dis majorly disagree see god is a god of second chances i agree with you but sometimes certain promises may be time bound time bound meaning when we let's say something was supposed to happen at a certain time in my life but i was disobedient rebellious all that but the time is now gone imagine you know i am already 10 years ahead of that uh, point and uh, i'm telling god you know god you need to do that again but that time is gone you know what i mean god will restore but certain restorations may not be exact because if time passes by you can't uh, have the exact same thing back akil do you do you agree with me on that yeah sure so god will restore but the restoration may look somewhat different okay all right so i think we'll just uh, go for a break we'll uh, come back to talk about uh, faith uh, collective faith or uh, everyone's faith put together how to work on that and how to see the fulfillment of god's promises all right so um, yeah let's take a 10 minute break and then we'll come back thank you